Welcome back. Market consolidating a bit. So after the big one and a half percent rally that we had yesterday, we've lost about half a percent as we speak. Uh, pretty much at the low point of the day. But the earnings that have come out today have been pretty good, whether it's Dr. Reddy's or Colgate. In fact, let's talk about Colgate and find out the details of the numbers. Manglam now joins in. Manglam, you're all smiles. The numbers look good. All smiles for Colgate this time around, you know, in line with what the company produces for tooth or, uh, uh, you know, in terms of toothpaste volumes, the company said that they have delivered positive revenue growth. This time around, they haven't revealed either volume or market share, but across all parameters, be it the revenue, EBITDA or even net profit, Colgate has delivered a bit of a beat. Over, over and above all of that, they've also saved advertising expenses to the tune of around 300 basis points. So that explains this, uh, the spike that we've seen in the company's margins and uh, that explains the beat that we saw in the net profit as well. Two statements from the management really stood out. The first one, toothpaste business delivering positive volume growth. And the second one, they said that the brand salience or brand penetration has remained strong. So that's telling you that maybe the market share of the company has also remained resilient. These were the two big fears of the street. Over and above all of that, their innovations continue and companies usually do that only when they believe the going is good. So Palmolive Sanitizers as well has done fairly well as per the management commentary. The stock was trading at around 39 uh, times going into results with this up move perhaps around 40 times fy22 earnings not as pricey as the other fmcg peers the likes of dabur marico and godrej consumer so let's see whether there is more upside on colgate or not only brokerage commentary will be able to tell you that and management commentary with regards to volumes would be extremely important this time around they haven't revealed that but two comments do suggest that there could be a volume volume growth and which is why the stock is higher today okay amangalam uh, thanks very much uh, for that so we'll uh, wait for the commentary from the management as well. Uh, you know, I highlighted earlier in the day, I mean, and the move started around uh, 10, 30, 11 or so, that uh, uh, IDEA was starting to uh, perk up. I mean, actually, IDEA at one point was up almost about 6.5 rupees. From under, seven, under 8 rupees, it had climbed to about uh, 8.5, 8.6, which I think is the day's high today. Uh, what's going on? Bharti, I think, is also, seeing, is also perking up. Uh, Reema, tell us. Well, uh, Prashant, you know, yesterday was Bharti Infratel's conference call and there the head of the company, Akhil Gupta, sounded optimistic on the prospects of Vodafone Idea. So in the question and answer, he was asked by one of the analysts that even if Vodafone Idea gets the option to pay its AGR dues over a longer tenure, it's still likely going to you know, remain in a tough stop spot. Will it remain competitive? To which Akhil Gupta says that since the government itself has proposed this longer tenure of 15 or 20 years to repay the AGR dues, he he believes or he's hopeful that the Supreme Court will agree to it in principle. That's point number one. And secondly, on the point of Vodafone idea still remain com you know, uncompetitive or weak, he doesn't agree. He says the world is full of capital and once they get that breathing space on AGR dues, the company will definitely look at AG, you know, will look at restructuring or perhaps even getting some capital in. So he has no doubt in his words that Vodafone idea will remain competitive. So that seems to be fueling the rally for Vodafone idea as well as Bharti in today, Prashant. Uh, Rima, thanks very much uh, for that. I mean, stocks have come off a little bit uh, from the highs, but, uh, uh, you know, that's what uh, is going on right now with that space. Uh, let's just stay with telecom. Uh, the Department of Telecommunications has uh, basically recommended that uh, Chinese companies, Chinese telecom equipment makers, be kept out of 5G trials and auctions. Uh, my colleague Kritika is picking this up from her sources uh, in the DOT. Kritika, tell us more. Well, the DOT committee that has been appointed to review the role of Chinese manufacturers, uh, the equipment manufacturers, specifically Huawei and ZTE, has recommended excluding Chinese operators from this, citing security breaches and security concerns. What they say is that they don't want remote access to be granted to Chinese vendors and they don't want data going out of the country. Now, we have spoken to our sources in uh, the telecom industry. This is going to impact Airtel, Vodafone, Idea, Geo and even the public uh, players for that matter. They say that while they've been prepared for this, no communication has come in so far. Procurement costs will go up by about 25 to 30 odd percent. So for that, they need to uh, get some kind of relief with respect to the pricing and that is something that could perhaps be in the works uh, according to reports that have come in today morning. Uh, uh, of course, the 5G trial timeline has not come in yet, so we need to wait and watch out for that. 
Thanks, Ritika, for that. And moving on, we told you first, and now it's official. The Prime Minister will be holding a meeting with the Chief of Banks as well as NBFCs this evening to discuss a roadmap and the vision for the future. Um, Ritu Singh now joins us with more details on what could be on the agenda. Ritu? Prime Minister Modi will be holding a brainstorming session with banks and NBFCs later this evening to discuss and deliberate on a vision and roadmap for the future. We're given to understand that broadly there will be four themes around which bankers will be making presentations to the government uh, headed by Prime Minister Modi and several other key government officials that will be part of this meeting. Among the key themes are one, digitization of financial services, credit link subsidy schemes and the larger topic of revival of the economy. Uh, now, as for the government's own press release, the topics on the agenda include credit products and efficiency models for delivery, financial empowerment through technology and prudential practices for the stability and sustainability of the financial sector. We're also given to understand that heads of State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, Bank of Baroda, uh, Axis Bank, uh, HDFC Bank, and among NBFCs, Bajaj Finance, HDFC Limited are some of the key players that are expected to join this meeting with the Prime Minister. We will be tracking this meeting very closely and update you with the outcome right here on CNBC TV 18. Okay, uh, Ritu, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, let's just put up ICICI Bank, uh, you know, uh, just uh, take a look at what's happening on the stock. Uh, it's up about a quarter percent. I mean, you know, over the last two days, that is Monday, from Friday's close, uh, which was 392, it, may, it uh, went to a low of uh, 343. Uh, that is uh, over the course of Monday and Tuesday. Numbers, remember, came in that intervening weekend. Numbers were better, but the stock kept uh, correcting. Uh, and uh, I was mentioning this yesterday that, of course, I mean, uh, one possible uh, and probably the most probable reason could be expectations that ICICI Bank also uh, could go in for a large round of capital raise and it may be imminent. Uh, so we'll see if there is some news flow coming up on that and we'll uh, put, that, uh, put that up as well. 3.52 odd, uh, is where ICICI is uh, trading at uh, at this point in time. Okay, let's uh, end on some positive news flow. A Cero survey conducted in Mumbai uh, or nearly 6,936 people from three municipal wards were studied for uh, sero pre prevalence. The results showed that 57% uh, of those surveyed in slums had sero prevalence, while in non-slums the number dropped to 16%. We spoke with Shashank Joshi, member Maharashtra COVID-19 Task Force, earlier in the day, and he says that the sero survey results are positive, uh, but we need to continue to be cautious. Also, adding that lots of parts in India are nearing peak levels with regards to the spread of COVID cases. Listen in. It's clearly a positive survey result, but you need to be a little cautious. Uh, there are three things in this survey which are very good and one or two uh, cautions. The first thing is that all these people who were tested, none of them actually went through an RT-PCR test. So all these almost 7,000 people who got their zero survey done, none of them actually knew that they had COVID. So they were either mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic, which means a lot of Indians could be getting the disease, not even knowing that they had it, and now they have developed antibodies for it. So that is the very, that is a silver lining of this. No country on planet Earth has reported 57% antibody positive. Probably this is one of the highest in the world, and that's very reassuring. A lot of our greens and oranges have actually started to become oranges and, and, and red. And that's not a good sign. Almost 15, 20 districts across the country have suddenly sprung up. What has happened is actually Maharashtra is at its peak now. And many parts of India, which were originally like Bangalore, Bangalore was doing so well. Suddenly we are seeing a lot of cases being diagnosed in Bangalore. So a lot of parts of India are nearing their peak. By our Independence Day, we should be past the peak across India. And I think India will also start flattening the curve in another two to four weeks from now. I think we are actually nearing the peak across the country. One thing is clear cut. Earlier, uh, what we saw patients in March, uh, April and May, probably there were, that was a more virulent strain. And I think the virus has mutated and has become less virulent. But still, there are pockets and patients which are probably uh, uh, still getting the disease, getting severe disease. 
Okay, uh, so that's some uh, sort of good news, uh, that at least in the case of Mumbai, but not in other many parts of the country, what uh, Mr. Joshi was pointing out, pointing out as well. We're down 51 points now on the Nifty. It's a wrap on this edition of Midcap Radar. From Reema, me, everyone on the team, thank you very much for staying with us. Your stock's in just a bit.